Hello, and <laughs> thank you so much, organizers of this conference, of this unconference, for your hard work and for inviting us. It has been an honor for us to get the opportunity to collaborate, create, and finally share this key keynote with you. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's very nice to be a part in this huge conference and connecting with people all around the world. Thank you. So I am Ami, and I spend a lot of time in Sápmi in northern Sweden. Uh, but my own ancestors are from southwest Sweden, and some migrated to the U.S. Uh, during the famine. Ola Stinneboom and I have collaborated on an embodied discussion about how we can offer different stories about Sweden and Sápmi, where we live. Uh, and we therefore present a collection of movements to support these narratives. Yeah, I'm Ola and I'm working to take back our lost culture heritage, such as the dance, the drum and the yoik. And it's a job with a lot of resistance and denial and an extreme self-oppression. The Swedishization problem that has been going on for centuries and has really crept inside the skin of the entire Sami population. Although we are very well aware that the state and the church have pursued and studied Swedishization policy, it has now been incorporated into Sami society. We think of unconferencing as a way to embed non-word conversations through movement as a way of communication. Thus, we create time and space for movements as part of our keynote. We are also using video and sound. One of the lights used for walking and dancing through our uh, keynote is a chapter with the title Decolonized Research Storying, bringing indigenous ontologies and care into the practices of research writing. The researchers and authors of this chapter invited Eitname, the earth itself, to become the na narrator. Did I say that correct, Ola? Yes, Eitname. Eitname. Uh, so Eitname is the narrator as well. And we are inviting specific spaces in Sápmi, Sweden and elsewhere to join our storytelling today. We are focusing on movement and the healing and caring of ancestors and certain spaces. We do this as a groundwork in search for unstrategies for decolonizing dance practices. We are also acknowledging non-humans as dancers, thinkers and activists in our presentation. Our own ancestors are giving space in to move with us and, and through us. I wear this, this gap here, this, uh, this dress is uh, made of reindeer skin. I made it myself and then um, it takes a lot of time. And I have my, my wolf uh, trousers. And I am wearing my great grandmother Tura's necklace. It's uh, the, the pearls are made of coal. Uh, not so common any longer. And my, I also wear my grandmother Linnea's dress. We begin by explaining which environments and surroundings we will address in our talk. Saiva, the other world, uh, the kingdom of death. Uh, you have Naiti, the path, Sami pathfinder and the master of the Sami drum. This is a drum that I made. This uh, copy from uh, our ancestors from the 1400 centuries. Uh, and uh, animal embodied perspective. You will also meet my ancestors, my mother and her favorite 
song, a song called Yoik. And I will take you to the following spaces. Nishikawa Sendrei's dance studio in Kyoto, Japan. The forest in the Swedish parish Tusseriad. A brownstone row house at Hancock Street, Bedford Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, New York. And finally to the newspaper mill town Hiltebruk. The ancestors present in my talk are choreographer and Nihonbuyo master Nishkawa Senre, my ancestor Andreas Jakobson, who was a pathfinder, shaman in the parish Tusteriad, and also my great grandmother Tura and my grandmother Linnea. In my next research story, I'll take you to Saiba, the other world. The nomadic life and emphasis on the natural words in Sami religion means that the view of death and life thereafter is very different from that of Western culture. When Sami people die, they live on in another world, in the kingdom of death known as Yami Aimu and Saiva, where life is perceived to be better and where they forever remain in the collective memory. Yami Aimo and Saiva is a parallel world where people can meet, socialize and interact with their ancestors. Sami do not see time as passing, but as time is yet to come. And so it is in the future that all possibilities exist. Ipia. No amma kovnas. Niiä saira. Niiä valtua niara. Niiä hirra maata vaatset. Niitä farkki liegu se substi ja niien kuotile. Niien siide. Niien ai reakta. Ai. Niiä kovne sibiä. Iiviä amma kovnes. Ei namte masseko ii kovnesia. Ei maatienan kripet. Ii niiä. The way Ola has constructed a dance practice in support uh, of Sami philosophy, you clearly sense how Sami philosophy and beliefs affect the movements. It affects the dancing and how dance is learned and taught. And this way of, of working supports searching for lost legacy in dance. When we introduce more of why, than how we dance, 
we also create individual agency. In my next research story, I take you to Kyoto, to my teacher Nishikawa Senrei's studio. My own dance pedagogy is informed by my studies of traditional Japanese dance, Nihon Buyo, since 2000. Here, Nishikawa Senrei and I practice suriyashi together. Suriyashi translates as sliding foot. It is a very important walking technique for Japanese dance and martial arts. Nishikawa Senrei made the suriyashi practice remarkable and meaningful, as if it was the most important assignment of the day. The structure of classes focused on precision through repetition until suriyashi and other movements permeated life. Nishikawa Sende explained to me and to her students that our most important audiences are our ancestors. Who are they? Do you know yours? And how often do you dance with them? Nishikawa Senrei encouraged us to lean back in space and through time to acknowledge them while practicing and performing. Nishikawa Senrei's request of dancing with my ancestors, I argue is a decolonial practice, since she was asking me to look for something that did not exist in my professional dance practice. This is why I offer classes to my students where we meditate and dance with our ancestors. This way of introvert dancing changed a lot for me, and I also saw how it changed the students. Addressing whatever inner life a dancer, a dance student, a choreographer might have should also be part of our performances and daily practices. Movements are everlasting melodies continuing their music through our limbs. A body can house knowledge from people who have passed away. Dance can hold presence from the past. Nishikawa Senrei died in 2012, but she still moves with me. My teacher is gone and I feel a responsibility to continue her legacy. My practicing without her represents my loss the necessity of walking alone, and the absence of that strong connection I had with her. I have continued with the practice, with teaching and creating new works of art. I have processed ancestral connections outside the bloodlines, constantly activated as we move together through space. I wanted to expand on the idea of who represented an ancestor and I wanted to process the legacy emerging from the teacher-student relationship in dance practices. However, as I continued, the expectations of who to find and who to honor while I was dancing was the biggest challenge. I was frightened that I would not find anything. I contented myself with referring to Nishikawa Senrei and listening to her voice and following her corrections as I practiced in urban spaces. I could not ignore the fact that Nishikawa Senrei demanded students to engage with ancestors from their own family tree in Suriyashi. I was frightened of the request of addressing only ancestors by blood since this is attached to violent worldviews on authenticity, truth and purity. Ancestors are part of the everyday in Japan, something dealt with on a daily basis. For the Bonodori festival, a festival for the spirits of the dead, people travel to their hometown each year to celebrate and dance with their dead ancestors. Dancing with your ancestors at Bonodori Dance Festival 
created spaces where humans, non-humans and ghosts could coexist. The respectful dancing for dead ancestors in Japan resulted in my own questioning of the non-existing engagement with ancestors in Swedish cultures. In Sweden, ancestors were not kept anywhere else other than the cemetery. A space and elsewhere for silence where common activities are to light candles in the winter and bring flowers in the summer. In this sense, ancestors were made immobile, dead of course, but fixed in a space. However, Ola has shown that there is already a dance practice for dead ancestors in Sweden, when Sapmi is included in the history of Nordic countries and in the history of Nordic dance practices. A Swami shaman called Noaiti, the Pathfinder, is a predominant figure who possesses the powers that enable him to travel between these different worlds. Noaiti can not only predict and foresee the future, he can also change it. The training required to develop the formidable powers required to heal and afflicted see vision and traverse different worlds is long and odorous. The zombie dance was a living culture until the end of 19th century. The zombie dance was an ecstasy dance where the purpose was to put the body in a trance to be able to travel to other worlds. In this project I work in the part of the ecstasy dance with the Sami drum. I have brought a Sami drum here as I have done. In the past it was said that this was a divination instrument. On the drum there are signs that means different things. Grace the Sami shaman used a needle and arpa I have brought a bearing here. When you hit the drum, so this makes the rings to jump. When it ends up in different characters, means different things, of course. In my work, I have worked a uh, a lot to try to put this ring, Alpan, in the body. There are no pure dance descriptions left. We, we, do, we do not know what it looked like. I have to embody this ring and put this ring in my body. It's the same thing as with a technique. I worked with my body so I am like a bouncy ball, roughly, which bounces around on the floor, much like this arpa. This is a rather demanding technique. I usually, usually say don't try this at home, especially not when bouncing on shoulders, knees, head and back. It is a special control technique that I call drop and rebound. You give the illusion of bouncing, but really it is a control form where you can receive and push away. So that you get the, this effect from bouncing. This is my study and my work in this Corona time. I lie at home and bounce around on the kitchen floor and in my studio. Well, see what you think. If I manage to conquer the expression as part of the Sami dance.
In the year 2000, I met my teacher, Nishikawa Senrei. She said, if you are going to continue dancing, you have to dance with your ancestors. However, I did not know who they were. I knew my grandmother, Linnea. But now, after all these years, I found him, Andreas Jakobsson. People said that he knew those who were here before people existed, and people were afraid of his magic. They said he used Jewish magic from a Jewish book. He discussed both the word of God and the law in learned words, and he said his opinion on the Christian priest's profit on the soul trade. He could talk to the animals It was an unruly time in the 1860s southwest Sweden. Forest companies began to conquer the farmers' forests with more or less criminal methods. Conflicts arose between neighbors and families when soil and forest became possible to sell for money. It was the shift from the old self-sufficient society to the emerging modernity of money management, capitalist exploitation and individual freedom. Andreas wanted people to remember the old beliefs and he told people not to sell their land to profit-making forest companies. Andreas was a good speaker, and people were impressed by his voice. At the same time, they would fabulate stories that he was fearless, and that his powers were everywhere in the forest, and that no one could escape his powers. Andreas had the same dubious position as the contemporary artist, combining a variation of skills in order to survive, traveling, touring. People feared him, but they also needed him, and he was able to survive thanks to this interdependent relationship. He expanded on the role artists, nomads, and people with itinerant lifestyles have played. Ula, I now want to ask, shall we go to Saiva together? Yeah, I will bring you to Saiva. And uh, please, please um, react and, and, and don't be afraid of Saiva. And then you can in, in, interpret and, and we can talk a little bit what you, what you think about the other world. Let's do, let's go to Saiva. <laughs>
And I have worked with putting animals in my body for 30 years. A good thing to start with is to, to go to the library and read about the animals that you are interested in and knowing more about. Good thing to start is to read about the animals' physiology and anatomy and evolution. I usually say that the more you know about the animal, that you are going to shape and imitate, the easier it is to understand the animal's behavior and the moment's patterns. I'm going to show you how, how to work with a fox and show you how to put the fox moment and the behaviors in the body and uh, some exercise that will help you to become credible in, in uh, your design work with the, the fox. Vulpus vulpus in Latin, rapier in South Sami. The fox is a dog animal that eats what, what it finds and it's not very picky about what it puts in, in itself. The fox is a cunning and wise animal that adapts quickly and learns new routines. The fox is a fast and agile animal that can easily run 50 kilometers an hour and can easily climb and jump a fence of two meters. What does the fox say? Woof, woof, woof. And how, how does the fox sound? A fox can have a, a, up to 28 different sounds. The most common is a short owl. Oh! And then you have short shells. And then the end, you have. Working with the head. The human are, we are thinking and, 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 and we are using our eyes and, and we can see something and, and then we are thinking, oh, what's that? But the animals are going on instinct, and, and when, the, when the, the fox sees something, and he, he, he goes directly, and, and that's it's important. And uh, for example, you can also work with if the fox is hearing something, you have to listen and hear the sound and then it's going directly on instinct. The animal's mo moment, the, the animals, the fox are, 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 are on four legs, but we, as, when we are human, we can pretend that, that we, we are working with, with four, four legs. And with the work, and then you have the tail. Oh, yeah. 
Min dotter har ju lånat alla mina svansar. Gud har fjällräven. En... When I'm, I am w- working uh, on stage, I, 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 I like to have the tail in, in, in my arm so I can listen. I can use it as a... Sometimes I have it. And and then I must show you my mask. Sometimes I like to have my mask when I'm doing the fox. And then maybe I, I, I will have a, a red fox tail. And then you can also put put the fox in in, in your face, and when you become the fox, And then you can have the the fox in your hand and you have the human hand and you become the fox. Uh, that was so um that was so interesting ola um i studied a, a piece uh, about tadanobu mm-hmm. who is half man and half fox uh in mm. in a kabuki play called yoshitsune to senbo sakura and uh. Uh, it's also this kind of you sit on your knees and you are uh, using your head so yeah. there was something similar there to uh, I mean, wow. I guess we have the had the we have had the same fantasy about the fox. Yeah. Thank you. I'm now going to take you to Hancock Street <laughs> in Bedford Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, New York. All right. <laughs> Little did I know about my great-grandmother Tora, other than she suffered greatly in life. Modernity meant that the grand narrative of progress prevailed, and some were left behind. Those who did not propel the development forward because of various reasons were locked up so that modernity could rush forward. Trying to grasp migration from somewhere far can be a detached endeavor, However, my practice-led research showed how the traces of migration were instead embodied through many generations. I learned that my great-grandmother Tora, like many others, escaped a poor life in Sweden 
and migrated to New York in 1909. Tura served in a Polish family for five years in the Bedford-Stuyvesant neighborhood of Brooklyn. She traveled far from home, but never really worked outside the home. Including her life and work in the grand narratives of dance history, it was possible to draw different stories about modernity. I was finally able to respond to Nishikawa Senri's request to include my ancestors in my dance practice. I therefore searched for and found the house where my grandmother worked as a servant from 1909 until 1914. I returned 100 years later, walking slowly in Suryashi and documenting inside the house. I considered slow movement as a privilege. Maids, servants ran up and down the stairs, always ready to serve their families and read errands, shopped for groceries. They had few possibilities for slow interventions. Finally, I was able to help my great-grandmother Tura to clean the stairs. These were the everyday movements in her life. This was her dance, her dancing. My findings supported the slow, unorthodox, tangled narratives. The narratives which valued all the threads that had not been seen as important and therefore ignored.
In my last research story, I take you to Hylte Bruk, Hylte Paper Mill, where my mother Shastin and grandmother Linnea grew up and where my family ended up when forests were bought by the Swedish government with criminal methods. The processing of culture and lost legacy through my own body augmented the mercilessness and ruthlessness of the early 20th century history. Moving in Suryashi through my ancestors' hometown Hyltebruk, a smelly industrial city in southern Sweden. The city represented the mass movement from the farms and forests into the stinking, roaring paper mill where the trees were ground into newsprint paper. The factory, representing progress, was the heart of the city to which families moved from forests and farms. The story of Hyltebruk, centered around the Hylte mill, has focused on progress and modernization offering employment to men. Hiltebruk has been the world's largest newsprint mill. However, addressing how a space feels through your body, walking slowly through Hiltebruk, an embodied reaction leads me instead to understand how the forests and trees were cleared to make room for industrialization. The forests and trees that my third great-grandfather, Andreas Jakobsson, tried to protect, where his actions were seen as an obstacle to economic gro growth in Sweden. Hyltebruk was founded in 1907. That same year, my ancestor Andreas died. The same story is repeated now in Sapmi, where in 2006, the Swedish government permitted a British company to exploit the mineral-rich region of Gallup for iron.